Okay, so we're going to go to two. I do hope you can read my handwriting uh, and it comes across okay. Now the metabolic changes are occurring in the muscle. Okay, so one of the things that happens when we start to exercise is we start to use oxygen, we start to use energy. So glycolysis is the, the main source of, of um, energy production and it obviously requires oxygen. Okay, now what happens normally in a working muscle is that you get a reduction in the oxygen levels because it's being used up and that then sends a signal. So the actual blood vessels within the muscle, the microvessels, will send the signal to the arterioles, and this is called, it's, it, they actually send a low frequency oscillation, and this is called flow motion. So it sends a signal, the vessels dilate, we start to get an increase in blood flow to that muscle. That's one of the first things that actually happens. If we get more blood flow to the skeletal muscles, okay, so we get vasodilation, we're obviously going to have more oxygen extraction. Now I've got another picture here just to demonstrate exactly what's going on during the exercise. Okay, so what we've actually got here is a muscle fibre, okay, a muscle and then with the individual fibres um, constituting that. So we've got an arterial. I'll actually use a different coloured pen just to distinguish some of these, okay, we've got an art. Uh, sorry, we've got, I'll just correct that, it's a mistake. This is an artery, this is an arterial, and then we've got terminal arterioles, okay? And they're feeding the muscle fibres, okay? So we can see that the, the blood, we're getting vasodilation, increased blood flow going to the muscle. And this is represented here. So this is rest, okay? This is how our muscles look, at, look like at rest. Now, during exercise, what are we actually seeing? We're seeing a, a greater proportion of activated capillaries, activated microvessels within, within the muscle, okay? So we can see that there is an increase in capillary recruitment, and this is important because it allows a greater surface area for gaseous exchange, oxygen to go into the tissue, CO2 to get into the vessels and back towards the heart and the lungs. Um, but we're also, we're also getting uh, an increased amount, uh, increased propensity of the, the microvessels which are dilating and they're sending a signal to the larger arteries to keep that dilation going. Now essentially during exercise what's happening is we're getting a, a reduction in oxygen, okay. This is causing the release of vasodilating molecules called adenosine adenosine and also nitric oxide, okay? Now these are two molecules which are released by the blood vessels and they cause vasodilation, okay? So the whole point of skeletal muscle blood flow is vasodilation, okay? We want to get vasodilation of those microvessels uh, so that we're getting more blood flow to the muscles. So adenosine, nitric oxide, but we also start to get an accumulation, so we get an increased amount of CO2, of lactic or lactate, lactic acid or lactate ions. We get an increase in potassium, okay? And we get, so we've already mentioned that, so we basically get an increase in these other um, uh, parameters as well. Now what they will actually do is they will cause the release of adenosine nitric oxide and in turn themselves, they will cause vasodilation. So the key thing that we're talking about really with the metabolic changes is vasodilation of the skeletal muscle fibres. So this is rest, this is exercise, reduction in oxygen because it's being used to, put to, to power the muscle contraction, release of adenosine and nitric oxide by the blood vessels, but we're also having this uh, flow motion going on which is those low frequency oscillatory signals being sent to the arteries to dilate, uh, and we're having uh, an increased production of waste products which will also stimulate the release of these two but also will cause vasodilation. Um, so these are the metabolic changes that are happening uh, within a muscle fibre. So we're getting increased blood flow to the skeletal muscles. Now we can remove this again, because we do not need this now. Now the next 
change that occurs. So we've had mechanical, we've had metabolic, and the third one is going to be the autonomic changes. Okay? So here's something to think about. If we were to not have the if we were not to have the influence of the sympathetic nervous system, okay, then all of our skeletal muscle blood vessels would vasodilate and would get a drop in systemic vascular resistance, would get a drop in blood pressure. That's not good because when we're exercising, we want to maintain blood pressure because we want to get the blood into the muscles to, to, to aid perfusion. Now, what the autonomic nervous system does is it causes mass sympathetic discharge. So when we start to exercise, mass sympathetic discharge, when we start to exercise, the hypothalamus of the brain okay, receives information from the cortex in the brain. It receives information from the muscle. Okay? So it receives afferent sensory signals. So it receives afferent signals from the mechanoreceptors. Mechanoreceptors. I always just put a P at the end of the C just to shorten for the receptors uh, and chemoreceptors as well, which are detecting changes in carbon dioxide, etc. So you've got, and you've also actually got thermoreceptors as well, which are detecting temperature changes, and that's very intricately linked to cardiovascular regulation during exercise. So we've got afferent signals coming to the hypothalamus that will then activate the autonomic nervous system to cause an increase in sympathetic nervous system activity, okay? Now, the activity of the sympathetic nervous system is multifactorial, so it's causing a wide variety of changes in the body. Uh, some of them are to keep the increase the blood pressure, some of them are to increase the heart rate, and some of them are to increase venous return. So we'll talk through each one, uh, one by one. So, of course, one of the most important things that the sympathetic nervous system does is it acts on the heart rate, okay, so it acts on the sinoatrial node and it increases heart rate. And it does that by the release of noradrenaline, okay, so noradrenaline is increased and that increases the heart rate. It also increases the contractility, okay, so now all of a sudden we've got an increase in heart rate and we've got an increase in the strength of that contraction, so more blood is being pumped into the vascular system, into the systemic vascular system. Now, as that's actually happening, we're getting an increase in blood pressure from this mechanism. So it kind of offsets the, the drop in blood pressure you would expect if you only have skeletal muscle vasodilation. Okay, so we get uh, an increase in heart rate, increase in contractility. Um, we also get, and this is the most important uh, uh, change from the sy sympathetic uh, nervous system, is a redistribution of blood flow. Okay, redistribution of blood flow. Now, this is very important because when compared to rest, approximately two liters extra, two liters per minute extra blood is sent to the muscles. Okay, so we, we have that increase from five liters to 25 liters generally, but we have a redistribution of blood flow. So what I mean by that is, instead of blood going to our renal circulation, okay, or to our gastrointestinal intestinal system, it goes to our skeletal muscles. It goes to the muscles that are working, that actually require uh, the blood. So if we have a look at that here, okay. Now what happens with, this is rest, this is moderate exercise, and this is very heavy exercise, okay? And what we're actually having is uh, changes in the blood flow. We're having an increase in blood flow to the muscle. Kind of makes sense. We're having an increase in blood flow to the skin. Okay, again, that makes sense. Now, brain blood flow, I'm just gonna keep that here. In fact, I'll do it with a different colored pen. So we're gonna have, the blood flow to the brain never changes. So whether you're resting or whether you're exercising, the blood flow to the brain doesn't change. But what we do find is that with the renal circulation, we get a, 
a kind of uh, an increase, but then a drop in, in blood flow because it's you know when you're doing moderate and heavy exercise, you don't need muscle, you don't need blood going to the renal circulation. You need it going to the muscle, and it's the same with the GI system as well. Okay, so we've got blood going mainly to the muscle and to the skin, and this helps to preserve cardiac output. Okay, so. The reason why that actually preserves cardiac output is because if you've got blood going to the muscle, you've got blood going to the skin, but you haven't got the blood going to the renal system or the GI, you can still maintain a greater cardiac output. But if there was competing demands on, on that blood, then obviously cardiac output would, would drop because you know, blood is going to each of those uh, different organ systems. So that essentially is what's going on with the redistribution of blood flow. So up to two liters of blood per minute are being redistributed to the muscle, specifically to the muscle, okay? Now, one of the ways that happens is we get vasoconstriction, as I said, to um, the, the, the blood where it's not needed and vasodilation to where it is needed. Uh, but the job of the sympathetic nervous system is to cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessels to tissues where it isn't needed. Now, one of the other things that the sympathetic nervous system actually does is it causes venoconstriction. So remember I mentioned earlier that 60 to 70 percent of the blood is held in the veins, the capacitance vessels. So when we need increased blood, we get a sympathetic charge to the, the veins and they constrict. They constrict, they increase venous return, you get increased preload, and then you get increased contraction um, to the heart. So that is essentially some of the main changes that are happening with the, with the sympathetic nervous system. So we're having an increase in the heart rate, the contractility, um, and that has an increase, uh, that has an impact upon the stroke volume as well, okay? Particularly the contractility stroke volume, put in brackets, increases redistribution of blood flow, and we get venoconstriction as well.